Welcome to this talk on computational design of Weingarten surfaces. I am Davide Pellis and I will present a joint work with Martin Kilian, Helmut Potman and Mark Pauli. The mathematician Julius Weingarten, in a work on the curvature of surfaces dated 1861, introduces a special class of surfaces characterized by a functional relation over the entire surface between the mean curvature H and the Gaussian curvature K, or alternatively, between the two principal curvatures kappa1 and kappa2. To visualize the curvature of a surface at a point, let us take at that point a normal section of the surface and let us consider the osculating circle of the corresponding section curve. Let us then consider the maximum and the minimum radii, R1 and R2, that the circle attains when the plane turns around the surface normal. The two principal curvatures kappa1 and kappa2 are given by the inverse of the two radii R1 and R2. The Gaussian curvature K is the product of the two principal curvatures and the mean curvature H is their arithmetic mean. With the two principal curvatures, we can compute the osculating paraboloid that represents the second order approximation of the surface at the point. Let us now consider a map that associates at each point of the surface a point in the plane with coordinates given by the surface principal curvatures kappa1 and kappa2. For a generic surface, this map forms a two-D region in the principal curvatures plane. For a Weingarten surface, since the two principal curvatures are in functional relation, this map shapes a curve. To the curve points in the principal curvature plane, it corresponds a family of lines on the surface along which the principal curvatures kappa1 and kappa2 are constant. This means that, along these isolines, the osculating paraboloid of the surface is the same. Due to this property, Weingarten surfaces are particularly interesting for architectural paneling. Indeed, panels disposed along curvature isolines have a similar shape and therefore can be formed on the same mold. By reducing the number of molds, we can significantly reduce the cost of a smooth architectural panelization. In recent work, we studied the potential of Weingarten surfaces in architecture, and we proposed a method for the design of discrete Weingarten surfaces with a linear relation between the principal curvatures, thanks to a special class of quadrilateral meshes that run symmetrically to principal curvature directions. Weingarten surfaces with a linear relation between the principal curvatures has been also studied by Jimenez et al. While a method for the design of Weingarten surfaces with a linear relation between the mean curvature H and the Gaussian curvature K has been proposed by Tellier in the context of architectural grid shell optimization. It is then currently possible to design Weingarten surfaces with a prescribed linear curvature relation. However, much less is known about Weingarten surfaces with more generic curvature relations, and here design tools are currently missing. In this work, we provide the first tool for the computational design of Weingarten surfaces with a generic curvature relation, and where the curvature relation is not prescribed but found as a result of an optimization. To compute generic Weingarten surfaces, we first observe that, for these surfaces, the isolines along which are constant the principal curvature kappa1, the principal curvature kappa2, the Gaussian curvature k, and the mean curvature h run all parallel to each other. To determine a Weingarten surface, it is sufficient, for instance, that the isolines of Gaussian curvature k and mean curvature h run parallel on the surface. Let us now take a surface parameterization uv. Clearly, if these isolines run parallel on the surface, also their pre-images in the parameter plane shall be parallel. At each uv point, the gradient of the Gaussian curvature k, given by the derivatives with respect to u and v, is orthogonal to the k isoline. The same is true for the gradient of the mean curvature h. Therefore, if the two isolines are parallel, also these two gradients will be parallel at each point. We can then define Weingarten surfaces as surfaces where the determinant of the gradients of Gaussian and mean curvature vanishes at each point. Note that with this constraint, we do not specify any curvature relation. Since gradients of curvatures involve high derivatives on the surface, 
we found effective to work with tensor product B-splines, which allow a high level of control of the surface continuity. We enforce then the Weingarten condition at sample points of the B-spline surface. For that, we use the guided projection method of Tang et al. The guided projection is a Gauss-Newton variant that works best if the target functions and the constraints are expressed as polynomials of maximum degree 2 in the variables. In our case, the main variables of the problem are the positions of the control points C, I, J. To write the target function through quadratic expressions, we shall add auxiliary variables and constraints as follows. We start from the coefficients of the first fundamental form E, F, and G, given by the dot products between the surface first derivatives. Note that the first derivatives of B splines can be computed analytically and depends linearly on the control points. We compute then the non unitized normal vector given by the cross product between first derivatives and the determinant of the first fundamental form. We can now compute the coefficients of the second fundamental form L, M, and N. Here, to keep the constraints quadratic, the square root of the determinant of the first fundamental form is not taken as variable but computed geometrically on the surface at each iteration. Finally, we can compute the Gaussian curvature k and mean curvature h at sample points. The target function is now expressible as quadratic polynomial, where the u and b derivatives are computed through central differences between sample points. With this implementation, we can also impose a linear relation between Gaussian and mean curvature by selecting some coefficients a, b, and c, or computing them through linear regression at sample points. We can also prescribe more general curvature relations with B splines. In this case, at each iteration, the HK point are constrained to the tangent line passing through the closest point on the B spline. Our optimization starts from a given B spline surface. On the right, we can see the curvature diagram in the HK plane. We enforce then the alignment of mean and Gaussian curvature isolines. As the optimization proceeds, the HK relation emerges spontaneously. During the optimization, we add also soft constraints that keep the shape close to the input B spline. Here, we see the deviation from the original surface expressed as percentage of the bounding box diagonal. By imposing a linear curvature relation, we can also design special Vergantel surfaces such as developable surfaces, minimal surfaces, and constant mean curvature surfaces with prescribed mean curvature. Here we start from the shape on the left, with curvature diagram shown on the right. Then we approximate the shape with the Wingarten surface by fitting a linear curvature relation, by fitting a B-spline curvature relation, and by just aligning the curvature isolines. Below, the deviation from the original surface is shown. We can observe that, without constraining the curvature relation, we achieve a better shape approximation. To explore the space of the Garten surfaces, we start from the reference surface on the left that was previously optimized for curvature isolines alignment. The shape is then slightly perturbed by moving a control point. After re-optimization for curvature isolines alignment, we observe that the shape converges to a different Weingarten surface. We observe the same behavior for increasing perturbations. This suggests the existence of a dense space of Weingarten surfaces that gives room for shape approximation. To achieve a good shape approximation with Weingarten surfaces, we must work with B splines that have a sufficiently dense control mesh, since the number of control points corresponds to the degrees of freedom available for optimization. For this purpose, we found it suitable a multi resolution approach where we first optimize a B-spline surface with a coarse control mesh. The control mesh is then refined and the B-spline optimized again. As we increase the density of the control mesh, we observe the B-spline converging to a Wingarten surface. One of the main advantages in using B-splines is the control on the surface continuity. Here we show the same surface on the left, optimized with the B-spline surface of B degree 3, and with the B spline of B degree 4. Since curvatures involve second order derivatives on the surface, 
isolines continuity requires degree 3 or higher, while smooth isolines require a degree of at least 4. Let us consider now the layout of curvature isolines. For a generic Wingarten surface, the spacing between isolines varies along them. We wonder now if we can design Wingarten surfaces where the spacing between isolines is constant along them. Let us now consider, for instance, the isolines of the mean curvature h. The spacing between the isolines of this function is given by the norm of the surface gradient of h. The spacing is constant if the norm of the surface gradient is constant along isolines. Let us take again a surface parameterization u v and consider the gradient of the mean curvature h with respect to the parameters u v. The square norm of the surface gradient is given by the square of the parameter gradients with respect to the inverse first fundamental form of the parameterization. Consider now the isolines of the surface gradient norm. The spacing of H isolines is constant along them if the two families of isolines run parallel to each other, and then if their parameter gradients are aligned. We can express again this condition through the vanishing determinant between the two gradients at each point. Kinematic surfaces, like general cylinders, rotational and helical surfaces, are examples of Wingarten surfaces with geodesic parallel curvature isolines. Our numerical experiments lead to the conjecture that these are the only examples. To test it, we started from a bispline close to a helical surface. Below, it is shown the deviation of the starting shape from a reference helical surface. Here, we optimize the shape for curvature isolines alignment and for geodesic parallel isolines. As shown below, we observe the shape converging to a helical surface. This effect does not occur if the shape is optimized only for curvature isolines alignment. Nevertheless, the constraint for geodesic parallel isolines can be used as failing energy during the optimization by minimizing the geodesic parallel constraint with a low weight. Here, we show the shape on the left optimized for curvature isoline alignment without and with geodesic parallel energy. As we can see, this energy yields a failure isolines layout. This can be beneficial in applications where the curvature isolines are used to subdivide the surface into regions, as for instance in architectural paneling. Let us see now how to panelize the Ingarten surfaces. As we have seen before, the local shape of the Ingarten surfaces along curvature isolines is constant, and we can use this curvature information to cluster panels that are formed on the same mold. For that, we compute the surface curvature for each panel and we group them by overlaying a regular grid that yield a number of clusters below a threshold specified by the user. To have the same unit of measure in both axes, we use the mean curvature h and the square root of the Gaussian curvature k. Since the shapes of panels belonging to each cluster are not identical, we have to accept small kinks and gaps between panels. To improve the smoothness, we optimize the shape of each cluster and the molding positions of panels in order to minimize the kinks and gaps. For that, we use the method of Egensatz et al. This method also provides the state of the art in clustering panels in mold groups on generic surfaces. If we apply the same procedure on a generic surface, with the same maximum number of clusters, the clustering grid shall be coarser entailing a less smooth panelization. To test the effectiveness of our optimization in architectural paneling, we start from a given generic surface, and we panelize it with a predefined number of mold clusters, as described. Here we show a zebra striping of the resulting panelization. Smoother contours indicate a higher surface smoothness. Here we also show in histogram the kinks and gaps of this panelization computed at sample points between panels. As much the histogram is shifted on the left, the higher the smoothness of the panelization. In red, we show the kinks and gaps of a panelization of the same surface, with the same number of mold clusters, but where the mold clustering is performed with the method of Egensatz et al. In this case, 
we can observe a similar smoothness. Below, we show the same panelization procedure after our optimization of the surface for curvature isolines alignment, with the same number of mold clusters. From the zebra striping, we can observe a significantly smoother result. The higher smoothness is confirmed by the corresponding histograms. Here, we tested this procedure with a different shape, and we observed similar results. If we observe the curvature diagrams of these two examples before and after the optimization, we note that we improved the panelization quality even if the curvature diagrams did not converge to an exact curve. Besides shape approximation, our algorithm can also be used as a design tool, where the user can interactively modify a B-spline that is then optimized for curvature isolines alignment in an iterative process. Here we show two surfaces designed with this method. And here we show the resulting panelizations, where we reduced the molds to three times the square root of the total number of panels. As we can observe, the cladded surface shows a good visual smoothness. Our algorithm is not always successful in aligning the curvature isolines. In this example, the optimization is stuck in a local minimum before sufficiently contracting the curvature diagram. However, we observe that making a surface more Bengarten, even if not achieving a clear curvature relation, improves the performance of subsequent paneling algorithms. In conclusion, we provided the first algorithm that makes the general class of Bengarten surfaces accessible for shape exploration, approximation and design. We hope that our work will also trigger further investigations and applications of Bengarten surfaces.